Hello, hello, everybody. It's me. I was journaling. I'm back. I'm streaming again. It's been two months of silence, and I'm sorry about that. But I, long story short, and we'll get into the details as we get more into stream, is that I just kind of got burnt out, and I needed time to, like, recuperate and become creative again and have a desire to be extra creative and create all these spreads. So, that's why I've been gone, but I'm here with a new time, Fridays, 11 a.m., going to try and keep up with that. Um, I made sure that it works out with my work schedule, and then I have the time to do it, and then I feel comfortable doing it, and I have the energy to do it. So, that's where we're at, Fridays, 11 a.m. Next Friday, the 14th, at 11 a.m., we will be working on a vacation spread, like, if you go on a trip... This is like my ideal stuff that I would include in the spread, that type of thing. But today, we are going to be working mostly in my yearly journal. And we are going to be working on my halfway stats. So usually throughout, um, I started this last year, and I'm going to continue it because I find it very helpful, is that I'm going to just kind of create a stats page of exactly where I am with like my habits and my goals and all the challenges that I've like given myself or the things that I'm tracking to just kind of see where I am and then I can like help it can help me reflect and move forward so that's what we're gonna do today um if you don't want to just rely on twitch here for me and my content you can check out my Instagram which I post about daily bullet journaling content and then also some reading journal stuff and bookstagram and you can also check out my YouTube for all my previous streams, which I am working on adding detailed descriptions to so that you guys know the materials I'm using and you can find them for yourself. What I have learned very quickly while doing like the stream descri descriptions is that I have a lot of very old stationery. Like I've got, I have a lot of stationery, but I've had it for a while. And so like some of the sticker books or washi tape that I have aren't sold anymore because like, I don't know, like, the, the brand or company discontinued it. Or they're just impossible to find because I no longer know where they're from. But we're working on that. We're going to get it taken care of. But, yeah, let's get into this, okay? Cool, okay. So this is my Happy Planner Stay Wild bullet journal planner thingy. The way it like came, it came with four tab sections and each of these sections have like some stuff that you could fill out as a bullet journal thing. But um, I use it more as a yearly planner or a yearly bullet journal to kind of keep track of like my goals and stuff. If we go to 2023 section, I have a couple of streams in which I worked on this. And I just have some goals and stuff and other plans and that type of thing and ways to track my goals. So that's kind of what I've been doing in here. And if we flip here, we have the beginning of my halfway stats. So the purpose of this spreads, as I said before, is just to kind of see where I'm at. So I haven't filled them in yet, but I have, these are like my habits and I just kind of want to see from these, like, how often I did these habits and if I fulfilled them. Next, we have my goals. And I have these little things that I'll fill in to kind of see how far I am into my goals. Um, not as, like, I already know that some of these I probably will not. I have not had a mason jar of water every day, even though I'm trying to take a sip of water. All the time. But it's just kind of to see where I am in some of these goals. Like the 52 books and 52 recipes to try. I want to see where I'm at so that I can kind of plan to like either catch up or like get ahead. That type of thing. So there's that. Some more stats. Um, these are for monthly challenges. Um, 52 things to do in a year. I kind of just want to see where I'm at with that list. Because I have done some of it but not all of it. And then... We're going to actually steal some more dot grid pages because today I want to specifically work on the halfway stats that involve my reading journal. 
Isn't this great? I like how you can just pop it in and out. So, which may also include me answering the questions on the mid-year book tag, because I feel like that'd be fun. Um, so, materials for today. Um, I have my yearly theme for all of this. So, I have been using the gold and black Happy Planner sticker book. And then the markers to go with. I have this metallic brush pen that I got from Stationery Pal. And then I have a couple A&R to dual tip brush pens. I have one permanent chalk marker that I've just kind of like, it's dying. And I don't have a chalkboard, so I'm just going to, I've been just using it in here. And then I have a Pilot G2 pen. I have scissors. Ooh, a ruler. Washi tape that I have from various places. I think these two are from Daiso. And these are probably from Amazon. Like one of those like variety packs, you know. And then, I don't know where this is from. But it's a little folder and it comes with some stencils. And I've been using the letter ones to write out um, halfway stats at the top of every page. So, I also have my sketchbook, which has my plans, and we'll be pulling out to kind of pick out the designs we need for the pages, and what information we need. And finally, we also need my reading journal, which is from Shopper Man or H. Lee, and which I'll be using to kind of like, because it has a lot of information stored, so that I can use it to pull the stats from. So, let's do this. I want to include the mid-year book tag in this, but I don't know where yet, so we'll figure that out at some point. One thing that I have made sure is done is we're going to go like this. Okay, I always write halfway stats at the top of every page. Um, and let's go with the pages like how many pages I read each month stats because that's very interesting it's a, I like it mostly because I can see exactly like when I can see my reading moods throughout the month and yeah I can tell when I finished a book like every time so like for May I didn't do a lot of reading I can see that like I slowed down and then I just kind of like trickled to a stop and I had a lot of zeros and ones and that type of thing but I can tell when I finished a book is when there's like lots of high numbers and then like a zero and a one like here I have read 63 then 45 then 39 then 99 then 60 and then I'm positive that I finished a book on like June 14th and after that <laughs> I didn't read more and that type of thing so that's kind of how I tell and I that's just kind of the way I do it. So we're going to use these pages to kind of help me create this. So I definitely want to include with the little monthly calendars that I'll be doing, which I usually, I've done before, so it's usually like seven by seven. And then I have two for the month. And then for the five lines underneath, I'll put, um, I'll be total page numbers. I want lowest day, highest day. I want to see, because I did this in 2022, and I want to see if there's anything else I... Mm -hmm. Oh, I did how many days I read. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to do how many books I completed that month. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a good plan. It'll make more sense as I go. 
if you are confused because we'll get a better look. So I do my favorite thing on the planet is that the ability to take out the page I need, lay it on a completely flat surface, and then fill it in. This part at the beginning, I will say, is the most tedious. And I am also trying to make sure I don't lose any pens. Because I think I almost did. Okay. This is where we're at. And... Feel free to plan along with me, or journal, or be creative, or be productive. Do what you need to do. Just have a good time, you know? Okay. I'm going to start by writing halfway stats. And while I do this, let's go a little bit more in depth of, like, why... I took a break. So, um, what was it? I think two months ago, June, July, no, June, May, April. So in like April, I graduated college and I was very excited because I was like, oh, I'll have all this time now to do way more um, content stuff, and bullet journaling, and that type of thing, and I was also thinking about, like, maybe doing more than one stream a week, and that type of thing. However, after I, I had to, like, take a stream break, to, because I was going on a little vacation after I graduated, um, and that type of thing, and then I don't think I just I don't think I picked it back up. I just kind of stopped there, and that was it. And I think part of the reason I stopped for one is that I was tired, and I went from graduating to immediately picking up. I went from, like, because when I was in college, if you've watched any of my previous streams, you already know this, but I had two part-time jobs, and then I was a full-time student, and that was a lot. It was a lot, and it wasn't always the funnest, but it's what I went, I did. And then I immediately went on this little trip, and then it was right back to just kind of doing full-time work. I didn't, like, keep the two jobs I had. I just had, like, a new one, and it was just that one. And I was kind of doing that one. I'm doing that one still. And it's like 25 to 30 hours. So not like full time 40 hours. But we're still doing a lot with it. And I, Because I still wanted time to stream into myself. But I just kind of got tired with it. I got tired very quickly. Because I did not give myself a proper break after graduating. Which I kind of regret. But... I survived. It's not like it killed me. And then I just kind of lost motivation to kind of be creative. I wasn't, I wanted to sit down and be creative and um, bullet journal all day, every day, but I didn't really like know what to journal. And I had gotten into the habit of, usually what I do is I save my next month's uh, monthly spreads until like the last week of the month before so that I can just dedicate all that time to it. And it's like guaranteed time to be creative at the end of the month. But I just kept, I did it really quickly um, in April and then I also did it really quickly in like May. And I kind of got ahead of myself. And I liked the spreads I did. But it just didn't like feel as right. Like I loved my May theme. Wait. Hold up. What was? Am I thinking of my themes right? I know June 
was the very cute was rainbow and I like that rainbow theme just some some parts of it was overwhelming oh yeah okay and then my May was butterflies I liked the butterfly theme a lot it brought me a lot of joy I had a lot of fun making it but um, I kind of rushed through it and then I felt like okay now what I don't know what else to make right now and I've done all the spreads that I could and then for June I just could not figure out a theme so I was like we'll just go the easy route and do whatever like a rainbow theme because then I can use whatever colors and stickers I want and I don't have to think about a theme and it worked for June and I liked some of the spreads I didn't like all of it but it it worked the way I needed to even if I didn't really enjoy using it because it didn't like you know there's like I can make a bullet journaling spread but there's also like the and I can make one that still looks good and still like functions the way it should but it's like I gotta feel happy, like satisfied with the product I've made in my bullet journal and if I'm not, I do not like using it and that type of thing. And so that kind of led to more of a June slump of like, I don't know what to bullet journal, I don't know what to do and that type of thing. And I'm not in the mood to bullet journal and I'm not in the mood to stream or create content and if any of you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that like. I kind of started posting a little bit less. Usually I post every day, but then I like slowed it down because I was like, maybe I'm tired and I need this break. So I took it and I was like, okay, I will slow down. I will let myself rest. I will not put pressure on myself to always have 20,000 different spreads made and to post everything I create. And I'm very happy I did it because it just kind of like, it gave me some room to like feel inspired and decide what I want to make and what I want to create and think a little bit more about what I have and what I want to do with it and not just like I need to make something it's just okay let's make something because I want to and I'm in the mood and like content creation doesn't give me that much pressure to do it and like go all the way with it but it's like I feel the need to and I am a little bit of a perfectionist so I feel the desire to um, go all the way with it make sure everything looks good and perfect find all the ways I can improve it and there's also a little part of me that's like I'm not getting much payoff in this is there a point yes there's a point because I do enjoy this I found that during June I came to a point where I was like I miss I miss this. I miss having making time to get on stream and chat and bullet journal and just kind of enjoy the process of being creative. Because that's kind of why I started streaming because I do not have a lot of people around me who bullet journal with me and that type of thing. And I hate that because I want people to bullet journal with and to do stuff. I have friends that I write with and they're the reason I'm not doing um, writing on sat like I'm not doing stream on Saturdays anymore because I'm writing with them at that time instead. And that's what's taken up the time or I'm working now as well. Or, but I do I started kind of streaming because I liked the idea that I can kind of bullet journal with people in a way. And if I, as I build up my stream community in the future, I can like have bullet journaling buddies and talk to them about this and have a dedicated time each week where we can get together, chat on stream about bullet journaling. And I kind of like miss that aspect of there's that potential to kind of build a community in that sense and I also I don't know I just miss streaming it was fun and I it's fun and it is fun I really enjoy it I'm having a good time and I was like okay I decided during 
June that I was like, I need to bring this back. I need to find a new time. I need to set my work availability so that I can have time for this and make it happen. So that's what I did. And now, here we are, back on stream. I'm going to be honest, though. I was a little, I was, not a little, I was very nervous this morning to hop back on stream. Because I haven't done it in a while, and I was a little spooked about, like, okay, what else am I going to talk about? What exactly I'm doing? Because I knew I wanted to work on the halfway stats, because I need to get this done, and I haven't been working on it like I should. And so I was like, I just need to do it. I just, I know what I'm going to do, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to execute it how I hope. But it's okay. I'll survive. And I, it's gone pretty well. I had some audio issues as I was setting this up that stressed me out. And then I was hoping to have my spreads like planned out in advance to make things easier and like like honestly as the countdown was going I was finishing like the list of the things that I was going to do for like the reading side of halfway stats so that's it was a little rush this morning but we made it let's see here where are my stickers so that was like it was a little you know, getting back in the flow can be a little difficult, a little complicated. We're going to just put the appointment one because I don't care, you know? See, that's, I like, I like using, like, this whole sticker book, and I want to. But some of them I'm like, well, that says appoint, appointment or priority or meeting. And, you know, we're just going to color it in and make it an all-black flag. Because then it just, yeah, you can kind of see where the mark is, but, yeah. Let's, I have my pencil, because I need that. And, first things first, we got to make our little calendar boxes. So, yeah, we're going to make them out of this lighter gray. Put that box, okay. Seven by seven boxes. With two spaces in between them. Okay. Oh, as for today's stream activities, besides the halfway stats, we will be doing um, a journaling prompt at the end. For sure. We will be doing that. I'm still deciding if you guys want. Here, we'll do it this way. I am thinking for the journaling prompt, either I do the mid-year book tag in the journal as the prompt for it or I will do kind of like a re more of a re reflective question of like halfway through the year thing so if you guys have a preference let me know in the chat if not chill but yeah after we finish this spread we will be uh 
We'll do a journaling prompt and stuff. Yeah. And I am excited to journal. So, speaking of journaling and writing, um, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you know that my uh, July challenge is to write three pages a day. And I'm doing this challenge because um, one of my goals is to get more works of mine published. I have one short story published right now, and I'm very proud of it. It is published in an anthology and I want to get more works published and I realize I've been like kind of lacking on my writing and that type of thing so my goal is to just kind of write more so I'm trying to write three pages every day I haven't been doing the best but I'm taking what I can get and it has like kind of made me write a bit more um, I'm working on a book and my, I'm kind of getting more encouraged to like write through it and like kind of write a couple chapters or not a couple chapters, a couple pages in a chapter as like each day. And I am also counting any time that I write in my journal as like a page that I wrote today. So I. I'm going to be counting that. So I'm happy that we're going to do that because then I can use that. Taking any writing I can get because at least writing is writing. And I got this idea. Um, I took this creative writing class throughout college. I took a couple creative writing classes, but one of them we used, the textbook we used is called The Artist's Way. And essentially it's just kind of like, it's a book that's kind of just helps you get out of a creativity slump and forces you to like work on your craft because the hardest thing about doing any sort of craft or art or whatever is sitting down to do it and so uh, we used it in our creative writing class and part of it is you take the challenge to write three pages every day to kind of force yourself to work on your craft. And it can be written about anything as long as you're writing because it's helping you practice your voice and your style of writing and whatever and it's just kind of forcing you to get stuff down on a page and that type of thing, edit later. Um, and like other ways you could do it with other crafts is like draw something each day, um, whether in your sketchbook or online, that type of thing create something like this every day, try something new every day, you know, just make every day. That's kind of the main purpose of it. And so I'm using that for this month's challenge to kind of force myself to write more and just get in the habit of getting more on a page so that like, yeah, I have it done. I'm also like in a place where I, um, the book that I'm currently like writing and working on I'm like I just want it done like I know what it's supposed to be I just want it done and so this is forcing me to actually get it done so that I can then go back and fix it because I already want to fix it a lot but I need to get it down first and do that type of thing Cool, cool, cool. And because it is past the month of June, we can fill out these stats together, which I'm kind of excited about to see the results. So. Oh, and then we'll need right here. We're going like this. We're going to go look at the old stats page. So, 
haven't books best books that I read that's kind of what I did no spending okay okay so we'll put in the stats in here and then in this column we'll use like some boxes and probably just kind of do some of the mid-year book tag stuff in that box and maybe totals of these like total pages read throughout the year so far um, and that type of thing okay so let's run the numbers oh and just kind of like I guess if you wanted to do this yourself this is my method of doing it because um, tracking how many pages you read in a day is rough and it is very difficult and it's like hard to like know how to calculate it and stuff so my main thing is I have here look okay, at I have my other bullet journal with me I'll grab it so first things first is that I have So this is this week, a little messy looking, because it's, it's the week. But I have a spot each day where I can track how many pages I've read and that type of thing. At the Like right here, I always have a place to write it down. Um, the way I keep track of it is I either have a sticky notepad or a little notebook with me at all times. Um, or like kind of wherever I go. Not all times, but like if I take this with me, so is this like sticky notepad, it's in my pencil case. And I just kind of write like, this is the page I started on, this is the page, last page I read, and that type of thing. So, usually it's pretty easy because you can just like, if you're just reading like one book in the day, like I am currently doing in the summer, I can just write, oh this is the page I started on, this is the page I ended on. Because I'm just focusing on that one book, and I write the page I ended on at the end of the day. If you have, like, smaller things you read, like, I also try to read scriptures and that type of thing, I will, like, kind of write, add, like, two or three, because I don't read that many pages in the scriptures a day, so I'll just write, like, a plus one or a plus two, which also leads to a lot of, like, one pages read that day, page like, thing, because I only read the scriptures or something. Or if I've read multiple books, I'll just, like, write, oh, this is how far I got in this book and that type of thing, but I keep it with me. And then I put it in here, and then at the end of the week, I put it in my reading journal to, uh, yeah, keep track of all that. So that's kind of the way I do it for future reference. Okay. Now, first things first, though, is we will need to, the first thing that we're putting in these boxes is how many pages read in total. So we're going to start with January. And I'm probably going to count these numbers at least twice just to make sure I got them right. So. With the thousand mark. Heck yeah. Okay. I'm just going to count this one just to be safe. One more time.
I got the same number. So, 1,519 pages total. Our next number is the lowest day, which is the 14th and 21st at zero. So I just kind of wrote 14th plus for the like and 21st equals zero to show that those were the two lowest days and that's what they were. And then the highest day, 115, yes, on the 18th. Next we have books completed in January. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to figure out, but we will do it. Okay. So I'm going to check a couple pages. I have this page, which has kind of like the times I finished a book and how far I got. Hmm. Okay. So it looks like I finished Okay, according to this, I finished two books, Fahrenheit 451 and The Color of Magic. And I can see that. I think Magonia here is filled out like I finished it, but I don't think I did. I think I finished it the month before, and I could just cross it out. So, The Color of Magic and Fahrenheit 41. So I finished books completed. Two. So here's a closer look at that. So top it says pages total. The two dates that I got as the lowest, which was zero. The one date is the highest, which is 115. Then a line that says books completed and two. For because that's how many books I completed. And I'm going to be honest, I'm a little disappointed in myself already. <laughs> but I guess that's how it is. So we're going to... We're going to put in... I think... That. We're putting in a bookmark. This notebook sh does come with two bookmarks. It's just one of mine broke off already kind of makes me sad. Where's my pages per day? Okay. Time to do February. I do like finding these totals because it's very fun to see exactly like which months were bigger reading months for me and which ones weren't. So, and to see where I slumped and where I didn't. Okay, so for February, I got a lower number. 1,328 pages total. Had three low days at the 10th, 11th, and 24th. Zero. And my highest day was on the 2nd at 1.38. So my highest day is bigger than February. I mean, January. And then, how many books did I complete? One, two. Okay, so I can see why the second is the highest day, because I finished a book on the fifth, then the sixth, and then the seventh. 
of February. So it looks like I finished three books. We're double checking. Did Hard Times, Inherit the Wind, and Caraval. Yeah. Oh, and Educated. But it is not on here. And I think I know why. Because I created a whole page for it. I did a whole page to talk about Educated, which is a book that hit home for me. Okay. So I finished four books in February. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. On to March. Okay. Oh, heck. Gotta start over. Okay. I'm hoping to see a month where I went every day reading and not just. But I don't know if I will. I don't think that's going to happen. I keep losing count because I distract myself. We're going to focus, get this done, and then I'll chat. Okay. Okay, this number is even lower, 1,134, and I almost went the whole month reading at least a page a day, but on the 31st, I failed that, which makes me sad. But I can see that on the, at the end of the month, like on the 24th and on, my numbers get a lot lower. It's just kind of like dwindle down. Okay. My highest is on the 5th for 121. And then books completed. Let's see. Okay. I think I actually have to go to the month itself. This was such a pretty theme. Let me tell you. I loved May's, March's theme. Okay. So. No completions here. I DNF the natural, which I think is interesting to note that I've DNF'd one book. So I'm going to write that down just like as a f something to save later. One DNF. Okay, finished My Mechanical Romance and The Crucible. I didn't even have The Crucible on here, <laughs> but I read it. Cool, 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 cool. So I only did two books. Yep, okay, not great. I think part of it is I was also in the school year, so like some of the pages I read were also like a couple textbook pages 
or like I had to read multiple books for multiple classes. I know during this time I had, where is it? Words like Loaded Pistols was one of the books I had to read and, but we only read like a couple pages in class and then we'd move on. And then I also had a textbook that wasn't like a book book, it just had a bunch of like different articles and stuff, so I would count that towards my pages read, but it didn't really help with how many books I read. It was just kind of sad. And then I also worked on the Hawthorne Legacy and my friend's book, Genesis. And I worked on The Natural. I just never decided to finish those books, or I did not get the chance. So there's that. On to April. And... If you can tell by these numbers, my goal to read 52 books this year, I'm already kind of far behind. So, I know that in June, I tried to kick it into gear and catch up, and I'm still working on that. So, we'll get there. Okay, we are in April. I got a lot of zeros in April. Oh man. Oh no. Okay. I did about half as much reading in April as I did in March. I only read 531 pages total. I have a lot of zeros, so I'm just going to put zero as like lowest and then my highest is 65 and that is on the 16th and uh, most of the other numbers are 30s or lower I have the 16th at 65 the first at 51 and the 29th at 50 which is nice beginning, middle, end as my highest point. But then throughout the rest of the month, it's about 36 pages or less. Dang. April is rough then. Okay. How many books did I complete, if any? Okay. Okay. April. Funny thing about April is I also had a challenge to read 25 pages a day and I absolutely bombed it because I just wasn't in the mood to read anything. So I avoided it all. Okay. It looks like I finished The Hawthorne Legacy and Genesis. And I started Legendary and then Legendary was due back at the library and I couldn't like, ref like um, renew it so that I could have it longer so I just returned it and then I like couldn't get it back right away so I kind of like gave up there but yeah just Hawthorne Legacy and Genesis at least I read two books like I completed two of them and it was also like after the semester ended so there's a lot of like there's a couple transitions the new job the trip everything so I guess it's valid that I didn't get much else read. However, at this point, I did also get a bunch of new books from my dad. As a end of graduation gift, I think there's like 28 books total. So, it's interesting that I didn't do much reading because even though I got a bunch of books to read, that all interested me. Anyway, let's see if May is any better. I already see it's better because we have 144 pages read in a day, so. But all the other numbers are a little small, so we'll see. Okay, 
a little bit better than April at 688 pages total. Still not the best. January is still my best month for reading. Um, a lot of zeros, so I'm just going to write zero lowest. And then my highest is on the 4th with 144. I always do really good at reading at the beginning of the month, which is, it, it's weird in my head because I know like, you know, the new month comes and we're all about change and refreshing ourselves and starting anew. And I obviously do that and it's very apparent because my numbers are the highest at the beginning of the month, but they are the lowest at the end of the month. And when you think about it, like... Here, we'll go, we'll look at a calendar here. So, in the same week, on like the last week of May, on the 28th, I read one page, then zero pages, then one and one pages on the 30th and 31st. And in that same week, I read 0 on the 1st and then 58 and 0 again. Which is like, that feels like it fits more in the pattern. But like other times it's like, I read barely any pages at the end of April. And in like, in that same week, I also read a fudge ton. In like the beginning of May. So, I think it's interesting how like, we can change. Like whenever we want like if you think about it there's the whole idea of like oh when I want to change when I want to improve myself I want to start on a Monday I want to start on a Sunday or I want to start tomorrow or I want to start next month I want to start when it is new and it is fresh a fresh point in time and yet the months change halfway through the week on a random Wednesday and somehow that's when we decide to change anyway even like which is kind of like the idea of like you could still you can change whenever it doesn't have to be just on Wednesday like it doesn't have to be at, at the beginning of next week it can still be on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday of all things or even a Friday because like that's when new months change and that's somehow we still decide to change that yeah yeah. You can change whenever you want. Do it. Whatever. Okay. Next. Okay. So for May, I did also read a couple short stories. So I have those like kind of noted in my reading journal. So I read three short stories and then... I do not want to lose this page. Okay. I read three short stories, and then I completed two books. So I'm going to say two point seven five, because I'm going to say that, like, every short story I read will count as, like, point twenty five, twenty five percent of a book, you know? And I read three of them, so 0.75, that's pretty good, I would say so. Okay, June, June is where I'm picking things up, okay, June, June is where it's at, okay, that's not what I want, I want this. And I know I picked things up in June because I had books due at the end of June and I finished two books very very quickly. Okay. So, 
So in June, I beat July. I beat January in June. I read 1,548 pages, which is 29 pages more than January. <laughs> I still had zero as a lowest, but my highest is on the 25th, is 227. And that, I know at that point, is when I got, I had the Book Hub book was due that weekend, so I needed to finish that. And then I thought I was in the clear, but no, I was wrong. I had Legendary, that I had that book again. And, no, Finale. I finished Legendary, but I had Finale, and it was due at the end of the month. So, I read Finale and The Penderwicks, which is the book club pick. I read LFG, which is the book that my short story is in, and I had a, I, I counted as a whole book because I had a bunch of short stories that I read. I had The Cruel Prince and, okay, wait, I need to recap this because my brain's not working. Finale and Legendary, The Cruel Prince, The Penderwicks, LFG. I read five books that month. Heck, freaking yeah. And the last two I read in like the last two days of the month, I literally like finished them. And I was like, cool, done with that. But yeah. Heck, freaking yeah. So, those are those stats so far. Um, so we did the pages per month stats. And let's do, let's grab some stickers. And we're going to kind of do like some best of stats over here. If I have any more of the boxes I want. Oh, I do. Okay. 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 So. Best month, June, and we're going to write 1,548 pages, total five books completed. And then, and then, yeah, 227 it pages in a day underline that put some bullet points take a break lowest zero pages and then we're also gonna write total books which I do want to check against, I have a page where I write down every book I've written. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I have 16 as my number. 8. Oh. I'll hold up. 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I'm missing a book. What book am I missing? Legendary Finale, Penderworks, Cool Prince, LFG. I didn't write LFG on this page. 
I have two pages for this. Okay, I'm gonna go grab a piece of supplies. I'll be right back. Although I did read LFG, I did not write it in here, which is stupid, and I'm disappointed. Okay. Okay. And then I don't include the short stories in this, so... Or, like, the individual ones. So, 17 books total and three short stories. And then the overall page count 6,798 6, pages total. So a couple of stats right there. Good time, good time. Okay. And I should add that there is one DNF. So... 1 DNF. And DNF stands for did not finish. But it's kind of like cho chose not to finish. Not like just it's sitting in your pile. Because I have a lot of books that I just like did not finish even though I started them. But it's like I chose not to finish it. Okay. Now we're going to do like some smaller stats, so I think this just calls for like cute little boxes. So one of these stats is going to be like, um, how many books I've bought slash received versus how many I've read. So we're going to get a little box. Pop it in. I'm going to choose gold. So, no. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. My space is very messy, but it works for me. bought and received I have a page for this I know I do where is it Why can't I find this page? I'm so confused. I That always messes with my brain. When I like feel like I should know where this page is, I can't. Okay, so this is my book spot received page. I did... So there, most of these I have bought 
there's like two or three that I've read um, received but my goal was like only buy 25 books this year so that you don't like overspend your money on books however my dad gave me 28 books when I graduated and I was like yo probably <laughs> that would like fill up this whole thing because like I have put some that I've received on here so I decided to just kind of like put it as like one of the things for now so I have one two three four five six seven eight plus 28 I think it brings me to 36 yeah so 36 Five, six, five, five, bought, thirty-one, received, which is pretty, pretty nice for me. I'm, I'm happy with those results. Okay, and then... Books read. And we know that is 17 plus 3 short stories. So I've gone more books than I have read. We're going to put a little noted sticker and we're going to fill in a little box. Which means I have a lot of catching up to do. So here's a closer look for you guys. So halfway stats, all the overall stats from this information, and then books bought and received little section. Okay. Or bought versus read. Okay. Another thing I wanted to do was take a look at my TBR and like be like, okay, this is how many books are on my TBR and then this is how many I've read. And I think okay. I have an idea of how I want to do this. So, we are going to include books that I have, like, read overall. Like, every book on my TBR will be included in this. And then I will also include, like, you know. But I'll, like, make a special note of, like, this is how many books I read off my personal library TBR like in 2023 alone okay so we're gonna do I know what I want to do I don't I'm gonna take this guy go like that And unfortunately, we're going to cover up that quote because I can to give it a little shadow. Okay. I'm going to put some washi tape here. Yo, this one's about to die. I'm going to go with gold. So, 
Now, the tricky part, counting my TBR. Luckily, I have, like, the first couple pages of this are, like, they're made up of the same amount of books on each page. Ooh, maybe not. But, it's going to be pretty easy to count these, so. We'll need our calculator again. Plus thirty-seven plus thirty-seven plus another thirty-seven. Okay. And now these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, 4, 7, 20, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So plus 36 plus 36. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, plus 32. And come on, I know what's in here. You guys are getting a nice quick flip through. Okay, and three more. Okay, currently. I own books owned two hundred and twenty five. That's how many I have. How exciting! This is also why I like bullet journaling because I get to have the joy of like. getting to know, see all these numbers. It, it brings me a lot of joy to be like, this is how many books I've read, this is how many pages I've read. It feels cool to me. My husband, who does not read, thinks I'm very cool when I can like finish a book in a short amount of time. And it brings me so much joy. Okay, so these are both 36, so 36 plus one book red plus another plus one two plus thirty two and then two more two more. So I've read a hundred books read 110. Looks like at least two of them I have read in 2023. I'm going to also go through these months to see if there's any other ones that I own that I know I've also completed. I have completed LFG. What was that? I've already counted. No. So that's three. Half a soul I own and is not already on the list, so I'm going to add it. I've already counted Hotel Magnifique. Here at the wind. I did buy and I finished. Hard times I borrowed. Okay. I 
Genesis is already on the list. Natural. I DNF'd it. We can write down I DNF'd one that I owned. I did get educated and I finished it, so that's six. Yep. I think it's just six. Out of those 110 that I've read, only six completed this year. I'm going to take the gold and write personal library stats so I know what it means in the future. Stats. Um, but yeah. There's that. And then we're going to add a cute little sticker. Because we can. Yeah. Okay. Now. We are going to switch gears here. I'm going to call this good for my reading halfway stats so far. Because there aren't really any challenges that I want to track in that type of thing. So, and that, yeah. Besides the mid-year book tag, which I feel like should just be put in my personal journal. And don't, doesn't necessarily need to be in here or on this page so we're gonna do that and we're gonna switch gears do, do, do. while I do that let's chat a little bit I will be making sure in the future that I am kind of more on top of it when it comes to um, how I am going to stream and stuff. I do plan on like, I've set aside the time so I can definitely get this done and focus on it and not get distracted by it. So I can guarantee that and I can set aside this time for it. Um, and I have like the next, the only time, I will have one time this month that I won't be able to do it, but that's because it's a part of my wedding anniversary weekend and I don't really want to stream during that time because it's my time with my husband so there's that but the rest of the time you guys will be able to come vibe with me we'll pull a journal together we'll have a good time and if you guys ever have any ideas of like stuff you want to see me like spreads you want to see ideas for themes you want to see tried always let me know either here on twitch or in the comments when you watch this on youtube later that type of thing so that, you know, we can, we can chat about it and stuff. So, that's that. Um, and next week's stream will also be at 5 at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And we will be doing a vacation spread. So there's that. Very exciting, very exciting. Indeed. Um, yeah. Let's, now, I'm going to go back over here. I have, so... For those of you who have been on stream or seen my previous streams, you know that this is not the journal that I'm currently using. And you're right. 
I had a small little black notebook that I had been using for my personal journal, but then it just did not suit my needs. I needed bigger pages, I needed full pages, and it was just too small, and I didn't like it. So I found I got this journal, which like has some old stuff in it from my past. I put a lot of pictures and cards that I've gotten in it now. And I was like, this will just be my new personal journal because I like the size, and I need to finish this journal anyway. So that's what it is. We're here at the end, near the end of it. And we're gonna be using that today. I have an orange mild liner, an orange fine liner. This is a cool washi tape that I kinda like. And then I have my seasonal happy planner sticker book and I'm gonna be focusing on the summer stickers today. Now, one, couple other things. Um, today's prompt. We'll put this in the chat. Anyway, okay. So, it's in the chat. The prompt is the mid-year book tag. You can kind of just look this up on Google. That's what I did. And I, like said, 2023 mid-year book tag. Click the first link I got. And that's how I have the questions I'm going to answer today. So we're just going to put them all in here and answer it here together. Usually I will stop talking at this point to give like journaling time and that type of thing, but no. We're just going to do it together today, which means you'll have to wait for my pauses to write. Okay, so I'm going to put in the date and mid-year book tag. And we're going to use some washi. I've been trying to like start to use the washi tapes that I don't use as much. So I have like, okay, pick the washi and then think about the colors that go with it. So these kind of color kind of go with the summer stickers here because it's got like the pink, the green, some yellows and blues. And then I'm just adding orange with my pen. So we're going to quickly look through these stickers think about how I want to use them, know that they're just going to fall out, because that's how it is. I like these. I'm definitely going to use these to kind of like write some of the info. So we're going to go like that and keep that one out. And then I do like this quote. Do I have any like because it has like summer things and some of it is just reading at the beach. It says read a good book. Yeah, I want to use that sticker at some point. Um, every summer has a story. Ooh, yes. We're putting this in the middle. I know what I need. I'm going to go... We're going to put this at the bottom. Um, yeah. That's what we're doing for now. Okay. Actually, I do want to outline it with my orange. Make it pop a bit. And give it its own bubble of protection okay every summer has a story so let's talk about them okay best book in 2023 is the first thing. Best book. We're gonna say um ooh, okay. This is why I kept my reading journal out so I could think about this. Um, we're gonna go to the pages of all the books I read. 
I like the Caraval series as a whole. Those were very fun. So far, I don't think it's the best book. I'm going to say Half a Soul. Half a Soul is the best book of 2023. Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. And I'm going to say it's that because, one, it had a lot of good vibes, which is why I'm going to use this good vibes only sticker, <laughs> if I can get it out. But this book as a whole, it has a lot of, it has the same vibes as the House Moving Castle books, which brings me a lot of joy. It also has, um, it was just a very cozy story. And I liked what it brought up to talk about. I liked what it focused on. Because it's like, yes, it had its plot. It had both. It had the beautiful mix of personal plot and world plot. And them coming together. And somehow, by solving one, you solve both. That type of thing. It did it very beautifully. It's a Regency romance, which I'm not... I don't usually read. And I found a lot of joy in this. Um... It has magic, which I love. It just had it had a lot of good elements, and it just had good vibes. And I really enjoyed it. So, now we're going to kind of switch to do, like, a remember sticker for the best sequel in 2023 that I've read. And I've read, the sequels that I have read are The Hawthorne Legacy and Legendary. And I liked Legendary. Okay, I'm going to say The Hawthorne Legacy. I reread The Hawthorne Legacy for fun. And I still love it. Uh, by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I reread it because I just needed, like, my inheritance games fix. And I really enjoyed it. It is my best sequel compared to Legendary because Legendary, I like Legendary. I like the Caraval series, but I can tell, like, it had to happen so that we can have the perfection that is the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. You've heard me say this before. That is my firm belief. And so, Legendary wasn't, like, the best in my mind. I like the Hawthorne Legacy a lot more. And I'm happy I reread the Hawthorne Legacy. Because I didn't remember much of when I read it the first time. Because I kind of binge read it. Because I just needed to, like... Yeah, I kind of binge read it, so I don't remember much. Okay. New release, you haven't... The next one, okay, this one has a longer one, so we're gonna... Go like that. Okay. So, newest rele release, you haven't read but want to. And we're going to flip to, in my reading journal, I can't, uh, a page for my new releases. Um, okay. I really was excited to read, um, the author who wrote the Win A Winter's Promise in that whole series. She released a new book this year. But I realize now that I probably won't get a chance to read it for a while until it is translated. So, this is my calendar of new releases. I'm going to go with Never a Hero, which came out in June. And it is by, I forget her name, but she wrote, the first book is Only a Monster.
It's Vanessa Lynn. Vanessa Lynn. I've been excited. I like that series a lot, so I want to read more of it. I just haven't been able to, and it's not on my library yet. Um, most anticipated release for 2023. I have a very, very big answer for that. We're going to see if I have any other more stickers I want to use, though, to go with it. Yes. We do. Most anticipated 2023 release. And if you don't... I have this answer. I'm so excited. Well, I have two. But there's one that I'm more excited for right now because, like... Okay. The second one that I'm second most excited for is A Curse for True Love, which is the third book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. And I'm excited for it, but because I recently got my Jax and those fictional characters fix, like that world fix, by reading the Care of All series, I'm like content with waiting a bit more. But I'm most excited for is The Hawthorne Brothers by Jennifer Lynn Barnes because... I need, I need more inheritance. I need, I need Grayson Davenport Hawthorne. I just need to know more about what's happened to him. If you've read the series, you know exactly what I'm talking about, why, I, why we need more from him. But if you haven't, go read that series first. Okay. And then biggest disappointment <laughs> yeah I already know that answer and we're gonna use a sticker and we're gonna use a sunglasses sticker go biggest disappointment and that is ooh well, wait, because I want to say The Natural, because that's when I I purposely dropped. I'm going to say We're going to say Hard Times. <laughs> no, no, I like Hard Times, though. It wasn't disappointing. It just was sad. What book disappointed me the most besides The Natural? Because I just dropped that guy, that book. Hmm. Maybe it was legendary. Because I enjoyed it. But I know. Or finale. No, I liked Finale a lot. What was... What disappointed me? I don't know. We'll just put The Naturals because I didn't finish The Natural. Because I didn't finish it. DNF. You don't even get your author written down. Okay. Um, biggest surprise... Biggest surprise. Which book surprised me the most? Ooh, Finale by Stephanie Garber. Because Finale gave me a lot to think. Okay, I was reading, I picked up Finale and I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I assumed the Caraval series took place like years before the. the um the once upon a broken heart series but i was wrong i picked up finale and 
it has like there's this one moment where it's like oh yeah this is all happening blah 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 yeah and then it just mentions this girl that got turned to stone in place of her whole family at their wedding and i was like that's how once upon a broken heart starts this is like way closer in time and it kind of like blew my mind for like a hot minute i'm like this I did not prepare for this. I did not think this is how this was going to happen. I did not think they were this close in time. That, like, in Once Upon a Broken Heart, they could go find Tella and Legendary and Scarlet and Julian and say hi to them. Like, it was a thing that could happen. So, I'm going to say finale. Because, mostly because of that, but also because it gave me a lot to think about when pondering a curse for true love. Um, which is... A book that we are waiting on still, unfortunately. Okay. But yeah. And we're gonna do a little hard because we can't. Okay. Biggest surprise. New favorite author. New favorite author. Okay. This one. I did make a whole spread about Ray Bradbury as an author. Because I did like his work and I wanted to read more of it. But I don't know, I wouldn't say he's, like, my top new favorite author. Oh, but it might be. Yeah, it is. It's Ray Bradbury. And he, I, I, if you ever look into his history, he's a crazy guy. He has a good time. So I think he does deserve this position as... A new favorite author. And this is where we're going to put the read a good book sticker. Because we can. And we're going to go like this. Because I hate weird spaces. So we're going to fill it in. So I don't go insane. Because those spaces were too awkward for me to be comfortable with. Okay. This is going to be more than one page. Because we're about halfway through. More, more than halfway. New fictional crush. we got to use a remember sticker. New fictional crush. Okay, I can only take from books that I've read this year and haven't read before. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I have a couple, so we're going to list them. So we have Legend from the Caraval series. We have Elias from... The Half a Soul series. And then we have Belle from the Hotel Magnifique series. Because they were all glorious and I love them all and they're great. Okay. And then we're going to do another Remember sticker. For the next line. Just kind of like. Go like that. And maybe I'll fill in this space. Um. New favorite character. Oh. I'm also going to add. Cardin. Is how you say his name. From the Core Princers. New favorite character. And we are going to go with I'm 
I'm gonna go with Dora from the Half a Soul series because she just says it how is it it is and does whatever she thinks and wants and she's she's great and amazing in her own special and amazing way so we love her and we're gonna just put some of these smaller stickers here if I can please have it thank you nope there you go but yeah, I liked Dora because her character is very much like, I just need to say it how it is, because there's, it says it in like the synopsis and in like the first section that essentially half her soul is missing and what it took with it is like all of her, her ability to feel emotions, specifically like embarrassment and stuff. So she's got no shame and will always tell it how it is and it's like, you know, she's just doing living her life, and people judge her for it. But then, like, I love it because there are some characters who, like, give her absolute, like, respect. She's like, you know what? That's pretty great of you for doing that. I appreciate it. Okay. Nope. Come. Ah, whatever. Okay. I'm giving up on those nice stickers. We're going to do... A pie is sun. I... Come on, sticker book. I believe in you. Please function. Okay, and we're gonna do a watermelon. Kind of upset with the sticker book because it's struggling. Okay. So there is that first page. Yeah, okay. Next page. Okay. We're gonna kind of set it up the exact same way. July 7th, 2023, mid-year book tag. Okay, now we're gonna try not to use the orange stickers here because we're already writing with orange. Next, we have book that made you cry, a book that made you cry. Educated by Tara Westover. It, it's a traumatizing book to think, like, read on its own. But when you also got your own trauma, it just, like, hits harder, you know? So that book definitely made me cry. Oh, we need a center sticker, I think. I'm gonna go like this. Go on a road trip. Have a dinner. Picnic outside. That's our center bit. Okay. So educated by Tara Westover. Next, we have a book that made you happy. Made you happy. Um... I'm gonna put two up here because they're very important. And number one is LFG. My short story is in it. And then Genesis, which is my friend, 
her story is in it. And so those are the books that made me happy because I got published, my best friend got published, we read each other's works, we had such a good time reading it. And it's just like, it was a new way to bond and we became so much closer that way. It was great. Okay. So those are my two happy books. Most beautiful book you bought. Ooh, I gotta grab the book for this one. Give me a second. We'll make the little slot for it. And I realize I should just fill in those spots because I don't have room. Most beautiful book you bought. So magnifique. Now, this book I didn't buy for myself necessarily. It was a gift from my mother. For It was my graduation gift from my mother. She got me an Owl Crate box. So, she got me the Owl Crate special edition of Hotel Magnifique. Because the regular edition, these are like the color palettes, like kind of swish. It's more purpley on the cover and then less teal. So, there's that. First of that. Second pretty thing about this book is we're going to slide off the cover here and look we don't even need the dust jacket and it's gorgeous it's like this hard plasticky it's so pretty greetings farewell pretty it's gorgeous it's simplistic it doesn't have spread edges which is kind of sad hiding that it's got beautiful shimmery end pages golly gee I'm pretty sure. Is this one signed? Yes, it's signed. I'm hard to, struggling to open. It's signed. And you thought this dust jacket was over? No. It's got another side that has character fan art. And it looks so cute. It's beautiful. It also made me realize like how old the characters were. Like they look way older here than I imagined originally in the book, so 10 out of 10. So you can like pick the side. I go for the fan art side because I'm crazy and as beautiful as it is, it's still like, you know, that's still cute. Still beautiful the way it's done. It wraps all the way around. It even goes on the inside. Gorgeous. This is the prettiest book I've gotten this year. I knew that answer right off the bat. We are also going to fill in those little spots. We are going to add a flamingo because we can. And then put the little beach ball. And you. And that. And then that. And then we need it. No. We're gonna do some fireworks actually. And then cute. Okay. And then Last thing on this list is a, um, it's my up, like, it's the upcoming TBR. So, books that I need to read in the next bit. So, 
obviously Hawthorne Brothers and Curse for True Love. We're gonna go with um, Never a Hero. And then I need to look this up. Half a Soul is a series. And I want to write down the other books in it. So it's 10,000 Stitches and Long Shadow. We're going to go with looking at other books that I like. The Chalice of the Gods by Rick Riordan. Um, Saints. I need to finish that. Volume 1. And... Of my personal TBR, we're gonna say From Blood and Ash, From Blood and Ash, and The Rose Society. And that's my upcoming TBR, and that is my mid-year book tag. And I know what I'm going to put in that little boxy area. Ah. We're going to put these little shapes of star confetti. a watermelon okay so that's that let's take a closer look so page number one we have mid-year book tag the date all the little things and answers page two this one's more decorated but still very cute so heck freaking yeah and that is going to be it for today's stream we've hit the two hour mark which is kind of crazy because i haven't hit that even when i was streaming in the past so i'm glad i made it today i've had a nice long stream i hope you guys enjoyed today's stream i know i did i had a great time creating i had a great time catching up and chatting and kind of like coming to a place where i'm like let's be creative let's stream again let's have a good time you know, you know. Um, next stream is going to be next Friday, the 14th at 11 a.m. And we will be doing a vacay spread just as a reminder. And if you check out um, the links in my bio down below, you will find my Instagram and my YouTube channel where you can, I will be posting all my previous streams on my YouTube channel with in-depth descriptions about where I get my materials or what they are, just so you can like find them a bit better or like if you want to use them or recreate the spread. If you do ever recreate my spreads, which I will, like, bless you if you did, or if you do, um, let me know. Type me on Instagram. I'm Lil's Journaling in all those places and that type of thing. Um, and I do post daily bullet journaling or reading journaling content on Instagram. So, there's that. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I'm going to go have lunch, and I'll see you next week. Bye!